Hello friends, this video on body fluids and circulation part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now it is question time. So we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So it is time to check how much we have learnt out of it. So let us look at question number one. Match column one with column two. So we have column one and we have column two. So let us try to match them. Eosinophils. What are eosinophils? This is a type of white blood cells, right? So what do they do? They resist infections. So eosinophils resist infections. RBC, that is the red blood cells. What is the function of RBC? Primarily transport because they keep moving in the blood from one place to another. So they help in gas transport. However, it is not only gas transport. They also help to transport many other stuffs. AB blood group. So what does AB blood group do? AB is the universal recipient. That is it can take blood from any other blood group. Whether it is AB, AB or O. Platelets. They help in blood clotting. That is coagulation. Systole. What is systole? Systole is a term for contraction of the heart or the chambers of the heart. So you can say systole is nothing but contraction of heart. Question number two. Why do we consider blood as a connective tissue? So why do we consider blood as a connective tissue? Now as I said, connective tissue is something that connects different parts of the body. Now blood connects different parts of the body in a way that it flows from one corner to the other corner of the body. So that means it connects the entire body together. So firstly it connects different parts of the body. I think it's a typo. Different parts of the body. Secondly, it is mesodermal in origin that is also a characteristic of the connective tissue that they are all formed from the mesodermal cells. Structurally also it is very similar to the connective tissue like if you compare it with any other connective tissue all of them have got a matrix. If you talk about bone, if you talk about cartilage all of them have got a matrix and in that matrix they have the cells floating. For example, in case of bone, the cells are osteocytes which are suspended in a matrix. Similarly, in case of cartilage, the cells are chondrocytes which are suspended in a matrix. Similarly, in case of blood, they have a matrix called plasma in which the blood cells are floating. The RBCs, WBCs, platelets, all those cells are floating in the plasma. So structurally also it is very similar to the connective tissue. So because of all these reasons, blood is considered as a connective tissue. Question number three, what is meant by double circulation? What is its significance? As I mentioned before also, if there are two distinct circulatory pathways exist for the flow of blood, that is called double circulation. Now, if you talk about human beings, what are the two distinct pathways? One is the pulmonary circulation and the other is the systemic circulation. Now, when you talk about pulmonary circulation, the circulation happens between lungs, and heart that is the oxygenated blood comes from lungs to the heart and the deoxygenated blood comes from heart to the lungs so this cycle is called pulmonary circulation what is systemic circulation it happens between heart and different parts of the body so if you have heart and different body parts what happens the oxygenated blood goes from heart to different parts of the body and the deoxygenated blood comes from different parts of the body to heart so this is known as double circulation and what is the significance of double circulation well it keeps the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood quite distinct so if you look at this overall picture you can actually see that there is no mixing of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood Inside the heart, oxygenated and deoxygenated are separated by the, I mean, they are in separate chambers altogether. And the right auricles and the ventricles, they are separated from each other by interauricular or interventricular septum. So that means there is no mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So prevents mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Next question. 
distinguish between systole and diastole as i said systole is always about contraction so it is contraction of heart muscles diastole is relaxation of heart muscles now the first heart sound which we hear when, when we use a stethoscope that is due to systole and to be more specific that is due to the auricular systole so after the auricular systole only the uh, bicuspid and tricuspid valve closes so the first sound that we hear that is the result of auricular system the second sound which we hear due to the closure of the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve that happens due to the relaxation of the ventricles like once everything uh, all the blood went out of the ventricles only after that the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve closes that means the ventricles start to relax so the second heart sound is due to ventricular diastole question number 5 distinguish between p wave and t wave so where did we see the where did we study this p wave and t wave exactly in the ecg electrocardiogram so in the electrocardiogram if you look at the graph which you actually obtain this is how you obtain the first wave is the p wave and the last wave is the t wave and then this series of p q r s t keeps on repeating in a normal ecg the p wave represents the auricular contraction whereas t wave represents the relaxation of the ventricular contraction so this denotes p wave denotes auricular contraction QRS denotes ventricular contraction and T denotes ventricular relaxation right so that is one difference secondly P wave denotes the start of systole before this P wave it was a joint diastole phase right just the beginning so that it start it is the start of systole and T wave denotes the end of systole that's because the ventricular systole ends and the ventricular diastole begins so that is T wave denotes the end of systole next question why do we call our heart myogenic now what is the meaning of myogenic let's see that now our heart is made up of cardiac muscles and i have already spoken to you about the speciality of cardiac muscles these muscles have a speciality that they do not they can produce um, the function of muscle tissue as well as nervous tissue on their own that is they it is because of the presence of these cardiac muscles that the automatic heart beat is possible with the impulses generated by the nodal tissues of the heart now these cardiac muscles can generate their own contractions and these contractions are called myogenic contractions and because of that heart our heart is said to be myogenic in nature because they can produce their own contractions as i said and these contractions are initiated by the nodal tissues which are present in the heart question number 7 sinoatrial node is called the pacemaker of our heart why this is very very important in fact i have discussed just quite a number of times before also but once again let's see it is called pacemaker pace means speed and maker means the creator so it is the creator of speed it actually initiates the contraction movement of the heart so it is it is the initiator of the rhythmic interact contractions of heart so what does it do it initiates and coordinates contractions of the first of the heart it it, it for the first time it generates the electrical impulses and once the electrical impulses are generated the auricles contract and these electrical impulses are then conducted to the ventricles through the bundle of his and once the ventricles receive the impulses they also contract so that means sa node initiates the contraction of the chambers of the heart it generates impulse that cause auricles to contract generates maximum number of action potentials that is why every time sa node generates an impulse there is one cardiac cycle taking place now it has been observed that sa node can generate around 70 to 75 uh, impulses in one minute and that is why our heart beats 72 times per minute so these are some of the reasons why it is called the pacemaker of the heart and this is where the sinoatrial node is located so the all the story starts from here question 
What is the significance of AV node and AV bundle in the functioning of heart? As I said, sinoatrial node initiates it, but somebody also needs to promote it or somebody also needs to conduct it to other parts of the heart and that is done by the AV node and the AV bundle. So AV node delays and relays the cardiac impulses. So whatever is generated by the sinoatrial node, it goes to the AV node. So AV node helps to relay it further down the AV bundle so that it can reach the ventricles. It also delays the signal so that the auricles can con contract meanwhile. So it is located near the bottom of the right auricle. It generates impulses down the AV bundle and AV bundle are nothing but fiber like structures which further break down into thinner or minute structures called Purkinje fibers. It is because of these AV bundle and Purkinje fibers that these impulses generated by the SA node are able to reach the ventricles. So that is how it they help I mean these two things AV node and AV bundle together help in conduction of the electrical impulses to the ventricles of the heart. So they together play an important role in the contraction of ventricles. So since they carry the electrical impulses to the ventricles because of these impulses only the ventricles contract. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. I hope this lesson on circulation and body fluids would have helped you. If not, please go through some of the basic concepts. For example, the functioning of the heart, which is very, very important. So if you have not understood it, please go and uh, revisit those slides once again. But uh, all I expect is you should understand them and then you should go ahead with the next lesson. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.